Hey folks, on this channel I've made several MIDI controllers, but recently I picked up a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini 3D printer, and it's opened up a whole new world of possibilities. I've been trying to make the perfect controller for my workflow, but previously I was limited by the tools I had available, and let's be honest, my crafting skills are not the best. Don't get me wrong, I love the creative constraints of building with cigar boxes or guitar pedal enclosures, but with this 3D printer, I think I've finally landed on a functional design that does exactly what we want and nothing else. Today we're gonna build this mini macro MIDI controller. I'll walk you through its features and discuss some possibilities for future versions. Stick around until the end because I'll be looking for your feedback on what happens next. I know that's the classic YouTube retention thing, but I genuinely need some input on this. And now, let's get started. <laughs> this is the A1 Mini. Honestly, it had been about 10 years since I'd looked at any 3D prints, and back then they weren't great, and there were a lot of technical issues with them. But now with more time and development, more competition out there, and just economy of scales, you can get a decent quality 3D printer for pretty cheap. And depending on when you're watching it, this printer is currently on sale, but usually it's pretty cheap even without the sale. This isn't a sponsored video, and there may be better printers out there, honestly. This just looked like the one that everyone was pointing to. Even though the entry price is low, I think where they get you in the end is in the filament cost. But either way, I've been having a lot of fun with it, and I look forward to bringing you all some more 3D printed enclosures in the future. Like right now. To design the enclosure, I use Tinkercad. It's a free online program for designing your own STL files that can be opened and printed through Bamboo Studio. Over on the blue mat with our print complete, and no, I didn't get it right on the first try, we can start assembling our controller. The brain for this controller is the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's an affordable board with more than enough power to handle anything we're going to throw at it. Looking ahead, I might try using a Pro Micro for future builds because it has USB-C and it doesn't require hitting this boot button every time that you want to upload a new script. The code and installation steps will be available on GitHub and I'll walk through the features in a bit. These micro switches and keycaps are from AliExpress. You could print out your own keycaps, but for the touch points of the controller, it's best to have something that feels and looks polished. To wire everything up, I ran wires through the enclosure. Some people wire a macro pad with a matrix using diodes, but since we have more than enough pins, I just ran everything directly to the Pico. One wire runs to each leg of the switches with all ground legs daisy chained together. Now with our script installed, we can open up Logic and start playing. Here's what makes this controller special, the hidden menu system. Hitting the top four buttons simultaneously enters you in the menu. There's no display for navigation, no encoder for cycling through options. We're using macros to control our macro pad. So here's how it works. You toggle between the menu and playing mode with the top four buttons. While in the menu mode, the top four buttons select different menu pages. On page one, you can set the octave, transpose, MIDI channel, and velocity on the middle rows with four quick presets on the bottom rows. On page two, you can select different scale modes. On page three, we can select different chord modes. Page four is reserved for future modes like this random note generator.
and the chromatic mode works great for beat making. It takes a minute to wrap your head around, but like most things, it becomes intuitive once you know how it works. Recently, Seed Studio sent me this device, and while I didn't end up making a video on it, I love that it included the printed instructions right on the device. It seems obvious, but it's kind of genius if you think about it. If I ever released this as a product, I'd include an instruction sheet or QR code describing the menu navigation. So what's next for this device? The code and design are already available online, so if anyone wants to build it, you can go build it. My next step will be to have a PCB printed. PCB Way has shown interest in sponsoring some videos, and I think they'd be perfect for taking this to the next level. Hand wiring works great for personal projects, but we need something more consistent and repeatable if we're gonna build more of these. The challenge is that the 4x4 grid leaves little space for a microcontroller, but I'm kind of adamant about keeping the design minimal and compact. Unless, of course, we add some more things like a rotary encoder and display like other macro pads have. This is where I'd like to have your all's input. Put on your designer hats. Is this device already perfect? Or does it need more features? A display, a dedicated menu, an encoder? This isn't meant to be a replacement for a MIDI keyboard, but between the scales and chord modes, I think this could be a great companion for whenever inspiration hits. Or while your other hand is eating hot fries. Mmm, hot fries. And that's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, which in turn will feed the algorithm. I'm really happy with how this device turned out, and I'm pleasantly surprised by the print quality from the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.